I really find pleasure, you know, feeding my Japanese koi in this pond and listening to this uh, artificial waterfalls. And drinking my early morning's coffee gives me pleasure about what I have done here. In the past, we just made a makeshift fish tank right here. And now it's been made concrete already. And you will see that it looks very natural now because the trees that we have planted here are already growing. And you will see that they are growing naturally, very naturally. And if you can come here, you will have a view of a natural habitat for our Japanese koi. And we are feeding them actually right now because uh, I'm, I intend to breed them again. And many of those who have viewed our videos about breeding were asking about what is the best season for breeding our Japanese koi. Well, for the countries that has four different seasons, I can say that it's during summertime. But here in the Philippines, the tropical country, like other Southeast Asian countries, we're breeding our Japanese koi all year round. You can breed anytime, so long as the conditions of the breeders are good. I'm feeding the baby catfish with the sweet germ. And there are three types of food that I gave. The first is the live food. The second is the booster pellet, the sinker. And then this one, the wheat germ. And early in the morning, I used to give them wheat germ because the temperature is uh, cold. This wheat germ is easily digested. And as you can look over there, you can see this DIY filtration buckets. I use only the 8 watt submersible pump. I will not use the powerful pump because all this catfish, this baby catfish will be, will be siphoned inside the machine. The drips of the water will give them also sufficient amount of oxygen. And in the other tank also, as well, we have bigger catfish now because this is older than the catfish right here and this is what i would like to tell you that in catfish farming you have to choose two things will you become a breeder or a hatchery or you will become a grower meaning that you will maintain a pond for grow out and then grow your fish and then sell it to the market. But in my case, since I don't have this luxury of time, you know, growing out this fish, I prefer to maintain an, a hatchery where people can just buy our fingerlings and then they will grow to their natural pond. Well, I believe in the essence of recycling our materials because uh, it's in the recycling that we can minimize our expenses and of course we can also make use of the things that are we think already unuseful but uh, this types of aquarium are just very cheap that we can utilize for our breeding of our live bearers and you will see that they have no uniform sizes and for the bigger ones we will utilize this for the balloon mollies and I'm so eager and excited to start this back because for quite some time, we already have forgotten the breeding of this live bearers where we actually have started. We started this vlog with, you know, breeding of this uh, live bearer fish. We go for the beta fish and then the mollies, you know, many things had happened before. But then today we will venture back and we will breed again our Light bearers, and that's gonna be exciting. Let me check on this hen of the ducks. Actually, this is the natural place for them, you know, where to lay their eggs. And I'm so amazed because even during the rain, I already made a vlog about this, that many times typhoon came, I think endangering the eggs of our ducks. But it proves me wrong because even if they are soaked in water during the rain, 
they can still be hatched. And this is what amazes me because these ducks really has the capacity to hatch their eggs up to the highest percentage. That's 90% actually. And we are just, you know, putting this galvanized sheet so that they are protected from the dogs. Not from the rain, of course, but from the dogs. And, you know, breeding or allowing these ducks to just, uh, you know, put their eggs in or lay their eggs in the bushes would certainly give us good result. And this is what's happening right now. And this is how nature works. This father goose is taking care of how many ducklings? There are more than a dozen of ducklings that he is taking care of. He's not a mama, you're a dad. <laughs> and since these uh, ducklings were small, this papa goose is already taking care of them. And you will see that they're already big. And I'm so happy with how nature works. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hi there. How are you? Ah. Woo. I'm really very excited about this boathouse and you will see that we already have installed the uh, purlings of this and today we will buy some materials for the roofings we will put GI sheets corrugated GI sheets and we will also you know use the recycled materials of some of these GI sheets along the side of this boat I don't know if this is gonna work but it seems that it's working and we will feed our catfish right here and the ducks. Uh, I have to get some stick so that our catfish will be alerted that they're gonna be fed. Oh, just a little sound that would uh, alert them that the food is going to be served. And then we will put here the food and they will come and eat. Oh, some of them are on a vacation, <laughs> I think. Oh, they're already alerted, you see? And just like this, when you're going to visit here, you just feed our catfish and enjoy the beauty of nature here. So this is it. And we will get inside and we will feed our tilapia. You know, our tilapia is a blessing from, from God because we don't intend to have this. We only intended an azola pond where we use the fine net so that the fish could not get in. But then, as you can see here, the tilapias are thriving and they are laying their eggs inside the net and they have this ability to preserve their, their nature because the mamas are putting the eggs inside the net and then when they are hatched, they are already protected from the bigger fish outside the net. I just used the bamboo and the cocoa. And these are the cocoa lumbers that we utilize as purlings. And then we will put the roofings. This is gonna be the complete construction of the boathouse. And please do make some suggestions. What we gonna do here? because I intend to have a coffee shop here or a lugao house, <laughs> batchoy house, I don't know. We have this native delicacy here in the Philippines called lugao, this batchoy, and you know, made out of pancit, this Mickey thing added with some fresh, you know, eggs and, and meat. And this is actually very exciting because some of my friends are already very excited as well to come over and have a taste of the Dexter's World bat choy. I don't know if this is gonna happen. I am not a cook and I don't have good recipes about this but we can always hire somebody to do this for us. So these are the development that we can share with you. 
And little by little, we were able to accomplish this because of your help, because of your support. And if you guys haven't, haven't subscribed yet to this channel, may I humbly ask you to please subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell because we are uploading regularly informative and very inspirational videos. And to those of you who have followed me ever since we have started this channel, we started from zero actually, literally. And now we are progressing and you were with me during my ups and downs. We had this, you know, old farm, but it was taken out with the government and we had to start again. And then when we have already started, the flood came in and many things that had happened. But now I can smell success for our endeavor. And thank you for being there always. See you in my next video. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Because as what I've told you, we are regularly uploading videos. Only here at Dexter's World.